questions. And if our foundation continues to be built upon uh, issues where someone doesn't trust another group or if someone is leery of another individual, I think from there we have really uh, disparities in regards to how high we can go. The counselor says these aren't easy conversations and emotions are expected to run high. Ultimately, he hopes they'll be used to improve Tulsa. Coming up tonight at 10, we'll have more from inside the meeting and what's next as the city looks to dive deeper into equality. Reporting in Tulsa, Megan Allison, two works for you. This week, Tulsa teachers are learning how to teach children about the Tulsa Race Massacre. About 50 teachers from 30 schools are at the TPS Tulsa Race Massacre Institute. They're learning about the destruction of the Greenwood community, visiting Greenwood sites and developing lessons for their classrooms for the upcoming school year. The Osage County Sheriff's Office is investigating a suspicious death in Fairfax. The sheriff didn't tell us the circumstances surrounding the person's death. They're interviewing people and they have leads, but they say they have not yet made any arrests. Case Community Park in Sand Springs is finally reopened after the Arkansas River flooding forced it to close for a major cleanup. Floodwaters tore down fences and trees, leaving acres of damage. Volunteers helped clean up the mess over the past several weeks, and those who enjoy the park say they're excited to see it back open. When they get it all repaired, it's going to be better than it was even when it was new. The BMX track at the park is also back open. Lake Eufaula campgrounds were also hit hard during the May flooding, and while many have reopened, they still have a long road ahead of them to fully recover. Two Works for You's Lorraine Calendar is at Brook and Cove to show us their progress. After the flood, they had to close 70% of their campsites, just like this one. But after several weeks of intense cleanup, people are returning to the campsites and get to enjoy the lake. Here at Brook and Cove, 25 sites remain closed because of flood damage. Back in May, Lake Eufaula was 12 feet above normal. Now at 5 feet and continuing to recede, crews are working to clean up their campsites. They've dropped down to about 30% of their sites closed. The maintenance crew is doing, working really hard to get that restored um, every day. They're, they're out in the parks right now getting pedestals turned back on so that we can restore electric service. The Army Corps of Engineers estimates repair costs to be in the millions around Lake Eufaula. Lake Eufaula is hosting one of their biggest events, Whole Hog, in less than two weeks, and they don't expect any issues as far as lake levels. At Lake Eufaula, Loring Calendar, two works for you. Your two works for you first forecast brought to you by Route 66 Chevrolet and Nissan of Tulsa. Really hot day today. Heat index values around 110. That's what it felt like for most of today. As we look, take a look outside right now on our Buffalo Run Casino Resort Weather Camera Network, we have mostly fair skies. A hot evening is on tap for the region. If you're a walker going out for a jock this evening, temperatures in the mid 90s still at 7 o'clock, and then by 8 in the mid 90s, 10 o'clock temps still hot. Feeling like 90 degrees here in the metro region. What we're tracking though for you is some sizzling temperatures over the next couple of days where the temps are still going to be high all the way through the end of the work week, end of the weekend, and that's going to set up for more hot weather. But there's some big time relief heading our way. But for how long? Details with the 10 day forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Mike. During this brutal heat, many people still have to be outside for work. And today, mowing crews out at McClure Elementary School were making sure that the campus looks perfect to welcome back students in just a couple of weeks. They start at 6 in the morning to try and avoid the hottest parts of the day in the afternoon. The Tulsa Public School grounds manager says his team does take breaks throughout the day. Some wear straw hats to keep the sun off their faces, and he tells them to stay hydrated. You know, it takes integ integrity and character to actually get out here and, and do this, man. And they care about children because there's, you wouldn't work and do uh, such a good job at these schools if, you, if it wasn't for the children. They want the children to have a good start when they come to school. These mowing crews cover about 100 places for the district, including some vacant lots. The Broken Arrow Police Department is retiring one of its canine officers. The department says that canine Riker is retiring due to health issues. The city council is transferring ownership from the city to his handler, and now he's going to live out the rest of his life in comfort. New at 6, a memorial honors veterans who committed suicide after returning home from service. The War at Home Memorial Monuments arrived in Broken Arrow today at Veterans Park. Every day, more than 20 veterans commit suicide. It means that the veterans have a place to come 
as far as a, a solemn place where they can sit and look at the 20 that's gone on before them that had the same issues with what they're going through. That it doesn't, they don't have to go down that road. There's, there's alternative routes to go and then to take your own life. The memorial was created by Mission 22, which helps stop veteran suicide. The monuments will sit in storage until being installed at the Broken Arrow Park later this year. An Oklahoma songwriter is being featured in a Fast and Furious movie. His advice for fellow Oklahomans trying to break into the industry. And did you know that the Tulsa aerospace industry contributed to the Apollo moon landing? We sit down with Chief NASA Administrator and former Oklahoma Congressman Jim Bridenstine, who shares Oklahoma's contribution to this historic event and what's next as we head back to the moon and to Mars. When we ask children what they want to be when they grow up, many say actor, astronaut, and oftentimes musician. Now an Oklahoma man is making music his career and getting his song featured in one of the biggest upcoming blockbusters. But I'm just getting started. Oklahoma songwriter Kyle Williams isn't just getting started in his music career, he's also getting some big attention after an appearance on NBC's Songland right here on Channel 2. I'm just getting started. I'm not like doing you know this before the dawn. Oh, I like it. This ain't daddy's money. This ain't the Wilburton native beat out other writers to have his song included in a new movie. I started songwriting when I was about 12 years old. Williams moved from small town Oklahoma to Nashville to pursue his dream. He's now getting advice from fellow artists and producers, including Oklahoma's own Ryan Tedder, the Grammy winning singer from the band One Republic. Exactly. It needs to be edgy as possible. Oh, it was really great. I mean, you know, growing up watching his career, uh, somebody from a uh, a small town as well that kind of had uh, moved his career to a bigger level. Williams' new song, Getting Started, will be in the new movie Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. It works so well for the movie that we're starting a new franchise based on Fast and Furious, and it's like, we're just getting started. Come on. Awesome. His advice for others hoping to make it in music? There's a lot of artists in the Tulsa area, in you know, the Oklahoma area that, that think that it's not possible to make a career out of music, but if you're if you're passionate about it, if you're if you stay on the hustle and you stay on the grind, then it is possible. If you if you keep pushing on, somebody's gonna recognize that and see how dedicated you are. We wish him well. Well, Songland airs Wednesday nights at 8 right here on Two Works For You. By the way, Hamilton is headed to Oklahoma City and Tulsa later this summer. And if you weren't able to get tickets or the prices were just out of reach, there is a way to get to see the show for $10. And Oklahoma City officials say that there's a digital lottery where 40 tickets will be sold for the $10 price. The lottery in OKC will be open two days before each performance. You know, we continue to celebrate the Apollo 11 moon landing anniversary 50 years years after two Americans walked on the moon as the world watched. Now, an Oklahoman serves as chief administrator over NASA, but that's not all Oklahoma has contributed to our efforts in space. Two Works Views' Aaron Conrad talked with Jim Bridenstine this afternoon and joins us now with that. Well, Karen, we covered a lot today. In fact, so much, I couldn't include it here, but one of the things that stood out was how our community and the aerospace industry here in Tulsa has helped make our country's space program, including that crucial mission back in 1969 possible. 50 years ago this week, Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins hurtled through the unforgiving blackness of space. Former Oklahoma representative turned chief administrator of NASA, Jim Bridenstine, speaking in Washington, D.C. on the 50th anniversary of the launch of Apollo 11. He sat down with Two Works For You from Washington to talk about Tulsa and the impact Oklahomans had on this historic day. As the former executive director of the Tulsa Air and Space Museum, I imagine that this anniversary is something very special for you. Can you tell me what that's like being a part of it? It really is amazing. Uh, and the, the reason it's important to remember the history here is because it helps us keep an eye on the future. Um, what is the stunning achievement that we are going to accomplish in this era in my lifetime, uh, what is that stunning achievement that people will, will remember and celebrate 50 years from now? Well, Mr. Bridenstine, you're an Oklahoman yourself, and of course you know Oklahoma has a rich aerospace history. We know Tulsans played a role in that Apollo mission, so what can you tell us about how Tulsans contributed to our, our race to the moon? 
So Tulsa specifically built many, uh, if not most, of the external components on the Saturn rockets that took Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to the moon. And of course, those same Saturn rockets uh, really took uh, six missions to the moon. Uh, and, and we had 12 men walk on the moon in that era. But Bridenstine tells us it didn't stop there. Tulsa Aerospace manufacturers contributed to the shuttle program and components for the International Space Station, among other things. Those accomplishments laid out at the Tulsa Air and Space Museum that Bridenstine used to oversee. So what's next as NASA gears up to head back to the moon? The president said go sustainably. He has said go with commercial partners, go with international partners, uh, utilize the resources of the moon. But here's the key. The, the president has said he wants to plant an American flag on Mars. And so ultimately, that is the objective. Well, and that just sounds wild. The timeline for that, he says, going back to the moon 2024. And he says that Mars mission, hopefully in the mid 2030s. So that is just unbelievable. And the anniversary of the actual Apollo 11 landing and the first steps on the moon, well, of course, is upcoming this Saturday. Absolutely. Always exciting to hear the developments in space. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Thanks, Aaron. Well, Mike, talking about weather. Yeah, back here on Earth, uh, <laughs> right. it's a little hot. Eyes to the skies. Right, not as hot as Mars, though, as we take a look <laughs> outside right now at our current uh, heat index value. This is what it feels like here in Tulsa. It feels like 106. Prior, it feels like 102 in Bartlesville right now, feeling like 104. We all know it's hot, and it's pretty typical for this time of year. But unfortunately, through Saturday, the heat index values are going to be extreme, between 105 and 110 across the area. And then temperatures will begin to cool off some as we head towards early next week. So something to look forward to. If you're going fishing, though, tomorrow morning, temperatures are going to stop warm in the lower 80s. Quick warm up, though, 91 degrees by lunchtime.